And then, lo and behold, a miracle happened. Now, I thought I was in for an epic adventure. I was going to make a Sunday school episode out of it, but the goddamn camera on my phone wouldn't work in rain. So that got ruined. Uh, it didn't matter because the battery lasted all of 15 minutes before my phone died anyway. So now I'm miserable. I'm on the verge of tears. I'm walking on the side of the road. All of a sudden, this horn starts blasting behind me. Now, naturally, I don't look behind me because I don't do that. Horn keeps going. I just keep moving off to the right. Like, I can't get more to the right. Like, you can go by me. You got tons of miles of road. No, this guy's just wailing and wailing and wailing on his horn. Finally, he pulls around in front of me and cuts me off. And I, uh, oh, great. What Maple Ridge gangster have I upset now? And how many different ways is he going to shoot me before he dumps me in the Fraser River? Well, none of the above. Turned out to be a very lovely Muslim man named Jonathan. Now, the fact that he was Muslim is only relevant because, you know, this is just another example of Muslim extremists helping us out when we didn't even ask for it. This man forced me into his vehicle, a warm, nice vehicle. He forced me to use his charger to charge my phone while he drove me free of charge into Surrey. A very pleasant man named Jonathan uh, from Quebec recently moved to British Columbia and uh, just saw a guy that he thought might need help and pulled over and wouldn't take no for an answer. What a wonderful example of what Canada is, or at least should be. Uh, Jonathan from Quebec, thank you, my friend. You saved my life. Literally, I think you might have saved my life. Um, and just a great guy, funny guy. Uh, we had a good talk about you know our kids and, and just being in BC and struggling. He's a struggling guy. Guy works three jobs right now to raise his kids. He's working like 24 hours a day. Uh, just, you can see it on his face. He's worn out, he's drained, he's just living, he's not even living, he's existing, you know what I mean? And uh, still found it in his heart to uh, pull over and help a guy in need who, who wasn't asking for help, but, but he just saw that I needed help. And he drove me into Surrey. He cut a good, probably six hour walk out of my potentially eight to ten hour walk that I would have ended up doing had it not been for the kindness of this stranger. Jonathan, you're my new best friend. Thank you. Um, that was my Maple Ridge adventure. I got back to Vancouver around midnight that night. Still broke, still wet, still angry. Went and sat in my favorite 24 hour coffee shop to uh, have a cup of coffee and relax and let the day wash away when the final chapter of this epic tale of a week occurred um, it's hard for me to get into because it's uh, it's a crazy one um, so let's take a little break right now um, let's thank the Champion Tree Entertainment Company for making this episode today possible. Uh, Champion Tree Entertainment Company is the one-stop solution for the independent artist, musician, or actor looking to launch a new career or possibly breathe some new life into an existing one. Anything you think you need to do that, the Champion Tree's already thought of, and they're going to do it for you at a ridiculously low price so that you can focus on your art and we can focus on the annoying stuff and we all move ahead together and make a profit. It's a great company. They can do anything you need for your career. Merchandise, marketing, promotions, uh, media relations, press packs. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Contracts, uh, 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 grant applications, factor grants, anything you can think of. Champion Tree is there ready to do it for you. Contact them. TheChampionTree.SimDiff.com or you can get in touch with them through the contact page on EricBennon.SimDiff.com uh, That's the Champion Tree because the only things in life that are impossible are the things you don't try. I, there's a sister company of Champion Tree called Seal Juvenile Records. Fledgling record company trying to emerge here 
in a vastly different uh, musical community. Things have changed a lot since the days of the big record company. Um, but these guys are great. They're starting out, and they just happen to be the record company that is releasing Awaken, the fourth release by the amazing Vancouver band Ashes of Purgatory, uh, due out this June. Could happen. You never know. Uh, but it's a really good record, and I happen to be particularly fond of the first single called Spinning. And I'm going to play that for you right now. This is Spinning by Ashes of Purgatory. I don't think I will ever get enough of that song. Spinning by Ashes of Purgatory from the new album Awaken, being released by Sealed Juvenile Records in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I skimmed over Surrey uh, briefly. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Surrey and my time because I've never really spent a lot of time in Surrey and frankly it was kind of cool. Um, I had a good time there after my new best friend, Muslim Jonathan from Quebec, dropped me off there. Um, First of all, it's absolutely terrifying. Let me just be clear about that. Surrey is a terrifying place. It looks like, well, half the city looks like a Mad Max movie, and the other half looks like this beautiful, amazing utopia, brand new, fresh, shiny construction with lots of windows and pretty murals and, and statues. Uh, but the funny part is they're not, they're not fixing it in a linear fashion. Uh, one building will be fixed, the next one won't. So it's a very confusing looking thing. You'll have this big, beautiful marvel of modern architecture next to a complete dumpster fire. It's um, pretty fascinating. And 
uh, then you get around Surrey Central train station, which is where I was, the Surrey Central Sky Train Station, and it's just everybody there is frightening. Now, first of all, everyone in Surrey is six foot seven. Uh, little kids, four year old kids, they're all six foot seven. Uh, they're very, very big. They're very wide people. They're large, wide people. I think they all start doing steroids in kindergarten. Um, even the Chinese people are giants in Surrey. Big, giant, monster people. Um, and they all smoke. Everybody smokes. Every single person. They have kids in strollers puffing away. Everyone smoked. And the kids in the strollers were six foot seven. They were 10 foot strollers. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, because everybody in Surrey is gigantic, smoking, mean looking, angry people. Not like the, the mean people in Vancouver. Mean people in Vancouver aren't mean. They're just sarcastic. Uh, mean people in Surrey, they're, they're mean. They look mean. They let everyone looked at me, and every time I smiled at someone, I heard this. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! I did not want to rumble. Um, went into a fresh slice, which, uh, we gotta talk about fresh slice. It's been a long time since I ranted about fast food. Uh, I think the last one was KFC, but fresh slice. Come on! Doesn't the CRTC have some rules about advertising that would make it illegal for Fresh Slice to call themselves that? Have you ever had a Fresh Slice from Fresh Slice? Is it just me or are these the least Fresh Slices you could ever get? They're at least three days old. They're always disgusting. It used to be worth it when they were 97 cents. That's the only reason you ate the shit. You know it's not fresh. You know that sign is a lie. But they used to be 97 cents. They're like 225, so the same place as good pizza. They just fresh slice decided to pop up everywhere and sell their shit quicker than the, you can get to the good pizza. I walked in, I ordered two slices of pepperoni, which I then strapped to my feet because they were more comfortable than my shoes, and I ate my shoes because they were fresher than the pizza. And I tried to use the bathroom in this place. I swear to God, this is a true story. I asked the gentleman if I could use the bathroom. The bathroom had an out-of-order sign on it. It was clearly a lie. Uh, he wanted $5. And I laughed. Ha <laughs> that's a good joke. Can I use your bathroom? No, uh, $5. I laughed. He didn't. He was dead serious. Dead serious. Wanted to charge me $5 to use the bathroom. And then him and everyone else behind the counter started laughing and smoking on their cigarettes behind the counter at the pizza place. It was, that's true. That's all of that is true, except most of it, probably. Um, anyway, got on the train, came home, and I was tired when I got home from all this wacky, crazy adventure in Surrey. I was tired. I sat down at my favorite coffee shop. I pulled out my phone, I was, don't even remember what I was doing, something on my phone, and I fell asleep, and god damn it if someone, one of my friends and neighbors here in beautiful downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, didn't steal the goddamn phone right out of my hand, I am not kidding, stole the phone right out of my hand, I woke up to the sound of the coffee shop owner chasing this kid down the street, he couldn't catch him. I went running out, a cop came driving toward me, I started pounding on the hood of his car, he opened his window, I said, my phone has just been stolen, I gotta get my phone back, my whole life's on that phone. The cop in the passenger seat leans toward me, I'm on the driver's side, and he says, your phone's gone, son, you just have to accept that. Unacceptable, I said to him. I said, uh, Let's get ready to rumble! I pulled out a very large knife in front of the cop and started running in the direction of where I thought the kid would be. Now, this is a shining endorsement for the education system and how bright today's youth are growing up to be. I got down to Maine and Hastings where people sell stolen shit. And I'll be damned if this stupid idiot kid didn't try to sell me my phone. <laughs> wow. Genius 
who had just stolen the phone right out of my head while I was sleeping.